Good morning, everyone. So, I wanted to, to do this super quick video. Um, we're doing another article review and some opinion. Uh, this one is the 10 Harsh Realities of Rewatching Rugrats. Now, I love Rugrats. It's always been one of my favorite cartoons. Uh, I have seen the new one. Uh, do not ask for a review of either the original or the newer one or any of the movies. Well, maybe Rugrats Go Wild, because it seems to me that Nickelodeon slash Viacom doesn't seem to like that particular movie for some reason. Because that movie, unlike the other Rugrats movies, always seems to show up in the free bin. And when I say the free bin, I'm referring to things like um, Tubi or uh, there's another one like that. Um, it might be Popcorn Flicks. I'm not sure. But we're going with Tubi because I see that. I see it the most there. So, since it ends up in the free bin all the time, you guys might actually get a review of that. Um, but the other ones, no. Not because I don't want to review the other ones. It's just... It's too risky. Uh, so, you're just going to have to be content with my Rugrats opinions right here. Because it's way too risky, so... Okay. Rugrats is a classic kids show that doesn't always hold up upon rewatch. Uh, yes and no, because, like, there are some episodes that, like, okay, mostly it's good, but, like, there's, I think, about three episodes that are kind of iffy. Okay, Regrets was the first Nickelodeon, uh, Nickelodeon cartoon co-produced by the animation studio Klasky Chupo. Um, but, by the way, they made a lot of other things, like, I don't know if they're going to mention this. Nope. Alright, so they've made other Nicktoons, like, for example, they've made Rocket Power... Uh, they made, there's a whole bunch of other ones, like they made, uh, As Told by Ginger, there's another one that they did, but I don't quite remember the name of it, um, they made Duckman, if you're old, if you're old enough to remember this, they made Duckman, um, which, oh my god, Duckman, we will be getting a Duckman review, because even though Viacom technically owns Duckman, they don't seem to care about Duckman, because I've seen some of the episodes on YouTube. But we're not going to review whole episodes, we're just going to do clips. Um, they've also done something called Santo Baguito. They made a failed movie, uh, failed movie. Um, don't ask me what it is, I don't remember. Um, and they also, if you are old enough, created, and when I say created, I don't mean the characters, they just created the show. Um... The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald, which, ooh, all of those episodes are actually available on YouTube. Um, that one definitely is getting a review, um, but uh, that's later because I have to figure out who owns the, well, of course, McDonald's owns it, but I don't think McDonald's cares too much because they don't seem to care about Ronald anymore. Although, to be fair, part of it's probably because of what's been going on with those whole with all the scares against clowns and whatnot. Okay, moving along. And for nine seasons. Okay, technically that's not 100% accurate. But we'll, we'll get to that. Nine seasons, uh, three movies, two spin-offs, and even a reboot. Okay. Alright, yeah. Alright, then. Ah, hold on. Somebody wants to say hello. Say hello, Captain. There you are. All right, there's your daily captain quota. <laughs> okay, so technically they're right, but they're also not right, because, like... <sighs> captain is being silly, and I don't have a plastic bag to shake in his face right now. Oh, well, okay. So, ooh, we're going to have to watch that, too. We're actually going to have to do that one, too. All right. The different characters, characterizations and dynamics of the baby and adult characters are endearing. Yes, they are. Alright, so we'll see. Let's hold it up even after 30 years. Wow, 30 years. I feel... <sighs> Dang, that show's only two years older than I... Er, no, one year older than I am. Oh my god. Ooh. Okay, never mind. Alright, do 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 pick a part. Right, so 11. Yeah, it's Chucky's father was on the brink of... <laughs> Uh, yes. Also, I think Chucky's father might have mental problems because they're, besides just breaking, there are actual illegitimate problems he might have, like OCD and maybe some other stuff. 
I think he might have Munchausen syndrome or something. But I don't know. <coughs> Fuzzy, no. I'm filming. You can wait. I'll lay down. Sorry about that, y'all. Fuzzy's being stupid. So, yeah, Munchausen's something. Right, let's see what they say. Our current theme is that Chucky, so instead, Chaz is very fearful, much, uh, much like his son, however, does not keep him from being a loving father to Chucky and later his stepdaughter, Kimmy. Oh my, yes, the later season's super adorable. I'll get to that. Season 4 had two more layers, revealing his wife passed away shortly after Chucky's birth. As a result, Chucky is essentially all Chaz has left. Let's see. The episode Chucky's Wonderful Life showcases had Chucky never been born, he would have been a hoarder. He <laughs> and a sock puppet for a friend. Yeah. Fortunately, the second movie, Regrets in Paris, brought Chaz with a no loving wife and Chucky with just a, as loving a mother. Yes, good movie. It's actually the best movie. Some people say the first movie's better, but nah, that, that one's actually better. Let's see here. Doo -doo -doo. He, Tommy's parents are none the wiser to his trouble. Uh, yeah, he gets into a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> actually, my favorite thing in the series is that, well, they never notice when he's missing. I think the only time they ever pay attention to the fact that he's missing is in, um, I forget what the name of the actual special is, but there's a special where they go to Las Vegas. Uh, that one, and then there's one other time where I think they actually pay attention to them getting, um, to them actually getting lost or hurt or whatever it is. So, <laughs> yeah, they don't usually pay too much attention. <laughs> My question generally have the parents preoccupied with their matters. While the children wander off into danger, <laughs> yeah, the adults are none the wiser about it. However, Tommy's parents, and by extension his grandfather, Stu and Dee Dee, go to absurd levels of not noticing their son is missing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true. Okay. First season alone, the baby Tommy nearly finds himself in the dead letter office at a post office. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And infected by crooks who mistake him for a billionaire son. Uh, yeah. I remember that. I don't remember that episode, but I do remember the post office episode. It was funny. Tommy manages to escape these life threatening situations, but his family rarely knows what happened. So, to set the bar high, and there would be plenty more in the show and movies. Uh, yes. <laughs> Angelica's villainy is quite diabolical for her age. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely diabolical. Because, like, uh... <laughs> Okay. Hot take. I don't like her as a character. I don't think she should have been created as a character. But I get why she was made. But, like, she's horrible. Even in the later seasons and the sequel-y things. Or spin-off-y things. I don't know. Still bad. But let's see. <clears throat> As the show's primary antagonist, Tommy's cousin, Stephen Dee Dee's niece Angelica takes delight in tormenting Tommy and his friends. The torment goes from always calling them stupid to scaring them and feeding them with lies to get them in trouble. Uh, yes. And most of the time it either backfires on her, or if it doesn't backfire on her and they get into trouble, something else happens that makes her actually regret doing that later. But we'll get to that probably. However, there are times when Angelica's sections could go a tad too far. Chocolate pudding, anyone? <laughs> if you haven't actually seen that episode, which is actually what this picture there is referencing, uh... <laughs> You're in for a treat, cause that's the most, one of the most disturbing episodes. Not like scary disturbing, cause like the I'm not stew thing, but we're not talking about that. Um, let's see, <clears throat> go a tad too far. In the episode, Angelica breaks a leg. Angelica pretends to break her leg and force her aunt and uncle for her. Yeah, no, see, you don't do that. I mean, I've seen the whole fake broken leg thing done in a couple of my favorite shows, like. They did it in Hey Arnold, although to be fair, she'd actually legitimately broken her leg and then pretended, uh, um, Phoebe had legitimately broken her leg at that point and then just added the, uh, made it so she could continue the broken leg just to get sympathy and to help her taking care of her. But we're not gonna, we're not here to talk about Hey Arnold. Also, same thing, don't ask for a Hey Arnold review. 
because the same reason. Viacom the but so if Viacom is a bitch we do not want to deal with. Yeah, and I apologize for my French. <laughs> okay, Aunt Nicola Pamper, she goes so far as to make Stu grow out to get chocolate pudding in the early hours of dawn, leading him to crack, and Angelica refuses the pudding anyway. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, Angelica always gets her comeuppance, but she never learns from it. Yep, same point. Though Pickles has little character. I'm gonna skip over this because Doe actually does have character, but you don't really see the character until uh, all grown up, really. And also, I refuse to say anything negative about Doe because Doe's the adorable baby. Okay. Yeah, Angelica's behavior is a byproduct of her parents' inaction. She's basically an entitled child. <laughs> She's the kid you hear about on r slash entitled parents on. Or Earl slash entitled people. Let's see. Uh, but, hey, let's see here. Okay. Part of Angelica's character is that she's very bossy. Amen to that. Her behavior is largely, but uh, behavior largely stems from her parents and their general inattention to it. Amen to that too. Occasionally, her parents discipline her, but those. Moments are few and far between. Amen to that. Both Angelica's parents are downright worker-obsessed. Work um, yes. Mother Charlotte is the CEO of a giant company. Uh, yeah. But bosses around her assistant, Jonathan. Which... Makes it see easy to see where Angelica's bossy attitude stems from. Yep. She's also she's always on her phone. Has no time to listen to Angelica's qualms. Angelica's father Drew tries to take a more active role in his daughter's life, but ultimately a pushover when handling her. Which okay, being a pushover is not good, but it's also not bad because sometimes it's just like hard to not okay. Stu's inventions work a little too well. Ooh, let's see what they mean by that. A large part of Stu's character is that he loves to invent toys. Oops, although. Uh, ridiculed by other adults who are skeptical of his work, he is, uh, he is undeterred. Despite his work being for kids, they are a tad unsafe for that demographic. There are several examples of the dangers of his inventions. In the episode Angelica orders out, Stu creates a voice modulator. Oh my god, not this episode. <laughs> okay, um, I'm sorry I'm laughing at that, but that particular episode, I distinctly remember it being very... She orders something, and I think it's supposed to be flan, and, um, uh, Grandpa Stu gets in trouble for it, or Lou gets in trouble for it, because they specifically told him don't order certain things because, or they'll take his teeth. I think that's what happened. And so it's like, oh well, I can eat this without my teeth. Uh, it was something like that. Okay. This uses it to impersonate her mom, force everyone to buy her presents, and squander her aunt and uncle's account to buy sweets. Yes, regrets in Paris saw him creating a giant electronic usable by anyone, and the babies later use it to rampage through Paris. Yes, and also really fun and adorable. Okay, Dee Dee listens too much <laughs> to lip shits. <sighs> okay, Dee Dee tends to quote child psychologist Dr. Lipschitz when it comes to young Tommy and Del. She reads all these books and turn to his hotline in times of difficulty. Right, I'm going to skip the rest of this. Basically, there's no problem. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, relying specifically on one type of style to learn something, or um, specifically in this case, lip shits. Having your own personal lip shits and only doing what they say is not a problem. Sometimes you need a particular type of person to tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and why to do it. Some people might love children dearly, but they need to follow the guidance of an actual person who tells them exactly how to parent or they can't do it. They might not be, they might not necessarily be incapable to parent, but they're not capable of parenting without someone telling them how to do it, which is not a bad thing, but you know, that's just me. Okay. However, it's shown in his debut appearance that he doesn't know as much as he lets on and he and so overanalyzed children. When left alone with Chucky and Tommy, none of his techniques to calm them down work. But he occasionally makes valid points, takes advice ranges from human error to it being potentially harmful in the long run. Yes, I have to agree with that part, but you know, mm, everybody's different. The babies have some disturbing imaginations. 
Uh, yeah. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, imagination is a big part of our growth. The babies have, you know, look on the world. Okay, blah, blah, blah. F fantasies reflect their differing personalities. There are, however, times when their mind can be disturbing due to them being so young. Yes. I can just see this in the season 2 episode. Chucky visits the party after Chucky fears using the bathroom. He has a nightmare about it. In the dream, Chucky imagines using the toilet as a part of the death row. And he sits to the chair. Tommy being really soothing priests adds most to the creepiness. These viewers wondering about the inner machinations of uh, Chucky's infant mind. Yes. Tommy wasn't always the best friend. Okay, um... Uh, I disagree there, but okay. He's always been the head of the Rugrats gang. Was of the babies go on their, uh, on their adventure? Well, whenever the babies go on their adventures, Tommy's always the one to step up and guide them fearlessly. However, in the second and third seasons of the show, he tended to take his qualities of leadership and bravery a tad too far. Um, ee Okay, yeah, I can see that. Sometimes he forces Chucky into doing things the leader doesn't consider a good idea. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, I agree with that. Season had no definitive, series had no definitive ending. Okay, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, regard that, okay. So throughout the nine seasons, okay, Tommy had, a, for example, Tommy had a baby brother, Chucky had a new mom and stepsister, and Kira and Kimmy, respectively, and Angelica received a I will introduce Carmichael. Yes. Also, side note, the Carmichael's were supposed to get a spin-off, but they didn't, so whatever. <laughs> okay. Regardless, these changes are moderate. Nothing significant happens at the end of the series. The episode has the character celebrating Kimmy's birthday. It plays out like a typical regrets episode, which is fun, but there's no sign of what the future holds. Ooh, excuse me. Or anyone having a new beginning. Yeah, okay. I'll be fair here. They probably didn't expect it to get canned. Or uh, the other thing that I thought is that uh, the, um, what's it called? The spinoff, All Grown Up, probably started taking precedence. Or my other personal theory, it, it, there's no ending because they probably ended up going on hiatus and the hiatus turned into cancellation. Because that kind of thing's actually happened quite a lot. That happens a lot, and I hate that. Um, also, little thing. I've seen the new regret, and I don't know how I feel about it, but I will say this. I love it strictly because they made Betty a lesbian, and I'm sorry, but if y'all saw the original one, it just always felt like she was already a lesbian, and that, like, her husband, I cannot think of what his name is, so we're just going to call him Wimp. Because I really don't remember his name at the moment. <laughs> but Wimp is definitely either like the surrogate or um, I like to think that her family wasn't necessarily comfortable with her. So she just took that guy because that guy basically is like, acts like a woman most of the time. He doesn't do anything manly. I've never seen him do anything manly in your life. I really of that series, he was doing all the baking and all the the like feminine things. So my guess is that like he's just like the... The, uh, I don't know what the right word is, um, fake husband? I don't want to say fake husband, but like that, that thing is like, like, so-and-so is gay, but they have a husband because they're trying to look straight kind of thing. <laughs> that kind of thing. So, well, with that, uh, I will see you all in the next video. Y'all might see this today, y'all might not. It depends on whether or not I'm able to upload this today. I should be able to, but I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!